morning. We welcome those of you who are here and those of you who are joining us on live stream to our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2. Our service will begin with hymn number 423. Please stand for the procession. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins in the prayer book on page 350. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, that as we may obtain what we promise, Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor 
or you will incur guilt yourself. <clears throat> you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 1, found on page 3 in your bulletin. Please read responsively by whole verse. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. <clears throat> You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. Nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a teacher, asked him the question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question, What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David, by the Spirit, calls him Lord, saying, 
The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God. Love your neighbor. I could stop right there. But I'm not. After all... This is one of those Sundays when the lectionary reading seems to be exactly what we need to be hearing. Love God, love your neighbor. But then again, is there ever a time when that message is not appropriate, when we need to hear that message and be reminded to love others? Last week, Bishop Waldo released a pastoral letter and requested it to be read today. I share his words with you now, particularly as they relate to loving one another. October 20th, 2020. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you on this day with a message of hope at a time of great division and discord as pivotal elections across the nation quickly approach. As many of you know, the vision of the Episcopal Diocese of Upper South Carolina is to make, equip, and send mature disciples of Jesus Christ. Its intent is to point us all in the same direction. That is, toward faithful and deep practice of Jesus teaching out of gratitude for God's grace, love, and mercy toward us. Christian maturity, therefore, involves daily intention as we travel the joyful, long-term, and sacred journey towards Christ. A key hope and promise of this journey is that others might truly be able to say of us, see how these Christians love one another. Today we face a world that has increasingly nurtured hostility in relationships with others who may think differently. It is a world that appears to be bound in dystopian practices of pride, Control, violence, deceit, arrogance, and fear, lording power over others. And at the same time, I am gratefully aware that there are many who faithfully and persistently strive for justice, peace, and the respect of human dignity. For as Jesus said, lording power over others is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be servant of all. Our task, when surrounded by dividing walls of hostility, 
is to be the bearers of good news, proclaiming that true power is found in humility. Bishop Mark Beckwith from the Episcopal Diocese of Newark resigned, recently brought to the House of Bishops' attention an organization known as Braver Angels. Its mission is to depolarize American politics. Bishop Beckwith, a progressive bishop, is among leaders of this organization who transfers the political and religious spectrum, including conservative evangelical clergy and lay leaders. With a strong nod to Abraham Lincoln's second inaugural address in May 1865, in which the president used the words, with malice toward none and charity for all, and called upon the better angels of our nature. Braver Angels has been building bridges with that intention. Braver Angels encourages visitors to sign this build bridge building pledge. Regardless of how the election turns out, I will not hold hate, disdain, or ridicule for those who voted differently from me. Whether I am pleased or upset about the outcome, I will seek to understand the concerns and aspirations of those who voted differently, and I will look for opportunities to work with people with whom I disagree. It's simple, it's faithful, and you can sign the pledge online at https braverangels.org. And I encourage all members of this diocese to make this commitment in advance of the election. Every Christian who chooses love over hate, hope over despair, and kindness over contempt will make a godly and hope-filled difference. The prayer attributed to St. Francis, for which we are all so familiar, calls us from the heights of faith to the way upon which Jesus calls to follow him. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Your brother in Christ, Andrew Waldo. Love God. Love your neighbor. I don't know about you, but when I read the part of the letter that said, it's simple, I wondered. Yeah, it's simple to go to the website and sign the pledge. That would take about two minutes. But living into it, that's going to take work and intention. And chances are it's going to be awkward, scary, and messy, and take time. And ultimately, it's not really about whether or not we sign the pledge. It's about loving God and loving our neighbors. Yes, even that neighbor. 
The words Jesus identify as the great command come from Deuteronomy and are part of what is known as Shema, which is the central prayer of the Jewish prayer book. The prayers continue, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be the frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on the gates of your house. What if we lived and functioned with a reminder to love God and our neighbor, being bound on our hands, or put in our time? What if the message popped up when we turned on our computers, put on our mask, or sanitized our hand? What if we taught Siri or Alexa to remind us any time we ask a question to love God and love your neighbor? What if it popped up every time we sent an email or a text? Love God. Love your neighbor. Sometimes I wonder if the woundedness and brokenness and hatred in the world, because people are loving neighbors as they love their self, and they simply don't love themselves very much. It becomes hard to see the dignity and worth in someone else if you're not seeing it in yourself first. It's hard to recognize our neighbors who may be different from us as children of God if we are struggling to claim our own worth and dignity and remember that we have been marked as Christ's own forever, created in God's image and having infinite value. Sometimes we all need to be reminded that we too are children of God, and we are God's beloved. So love God. Love your neighbor. And know that you are loved. Amen. maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Believe the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our, our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
we look, look for, for the, the resurrection, resurrection of the dead, dead and the, the life, life of the world, world to come. To come. Amen. Amen. Called to serve God and our neighbor, let us pray in the name of Jesus for all who are in any need or trouble, saying, Hear us, O Holy One. And for all your people, that we may always experience the wonder and joy of loving and being loved by God. Hear us, O Holy One. For this parish family, that we may share the good news with one another and live as signs of God's love. Hear us, O Holy One. For a greater sense of gratitude, that we may recognize the many ways God shows love for us, and that we may be filled with awe and thankfulness for God's gifts. Hear us, O Holy One. For Donald, our president, and for all those in authority, that hatred and mistrust may be transformed into new ways of living together as neighbors, and that the spirit of peace will take root and grow in the hearts of the leaders of nations. Hear us, O Holy One. For all who have the coronavirus and those who care for them, that God will heal and restore the sick and help those assisting them to be vessels of God's healing love. Hear us, O Holy One for refugees, immigrants, and all who live in a strange land, that hospitality and love will greet them. Hear us, O Holy One. For all those in need of our prayers, especially those on the parish prayer list and the prayer list of the Daughters of the King, that they may be strengthened, relieved, and sustained by God's care for them. Hear us, O Holy One. For the children of our parish celebrating birthdays this week, Abigail McGarrity, and all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Hear us, O Holy One. For our stewardship campaign, that we will heed the call to share our gifts of time, talent, and treasure and so strengthen our mission and meet the financial needs of the Advent, our church home. Hear us, O Holy One. For all the departed, remembering especially Charles Duvall and Margaret Holroyd, and for Buddy Cubitt and Buddy Nelms, in whose memory the flowers adorning the altar are given, that they may be welcomed by the Son of God and receive the fullness of new life given them through his death and resurrection. Hear us, O Holy One. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, blessed Simon and Jude, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Jesus Christ. To you, O Holy One, we give praise and glory. Gracious God, you established your holy law on the two commandments, to love you and to love our neighbor. Hear our prayers and grant that by keeping your precepts, we may rejoice to enter your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Again, I welcome each of you to our service today and a welcome to all those who are joining us through live streaming. Thank you for being flexible with us this morning and the, uh, yesterday when we had to make a last minute discussion, decision about whether to be outside and inside. That's one of the dynamics and issues of uh, planning worship and uh, with unpredictable elements. So thank you, and I'm glad that all of you are here. I want to remind you of some ac outreach activities that we have continuing. Next Sunday, we will continue the Turkeys for Total Drive. Uh, we are, have set a goal to gather 100 frozen turkeys for total ministries who have a goal of gathering 800 turkeys uh, for uh, families in the Spartanburg area to have a Thanksgiving meal. So please bring a turkey and drop that off next Sunday, frozen turkey. Um, also, we are continuing the October Sock Fest of gathering socks for the children in the P.S. I Love You Ministries. Next Sunday is All Saints Day. Please be watching your email and social media for announcements about service times and directions, both for that service and for the service of Remembrance on Monday. Today we will be bringing you Eucharist. You can stay where you are, and David and I will be bringing it out to you when that time comes during Holy Eucharist. God.
Lord to be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen, Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please join with me in saying a prayer for the spiritual reception of the sacrament by one who is unable to be present. It's in your order of worship on page 8. My Lord God, I join with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, and I offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my entire self with the earnest desire that I may always be in union with you. I proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And although I cannot be physically present to receive you in the consecrated bread and wine, the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to enter my heart spiritually. I embrace you with all the affection of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from your presence and grant that I may live and die and be raised to new life in your love. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love, <clears throat> keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the, his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.